Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with J. Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Let us take a quick look at trial balance, which is a part of the control system. At the end of the lesson, you should be able to prepare a trial balance from a list of balances, including finding the capital. Now we're going to look at a worked example. But before we get into that, let us look at the principle of preparing a trial balance, an easy principle of preparing a trial balance from a list of balances. Now, on your screen, you're seeing the word pearls, this beautiful thing, right? We're going to split that into two. When you divide it into two, notice you have a left side and you have a right side. So the left side is our debit side, which are our debit balances. And the right side is our credit side, which are our credit balances. Now, what does the P stand for? P stands for the word purchases, right? So your purchases carry a debit balance. You can check when you prepare your ledger account and balance off where the balance falls for your purchases. Expenses, those carry debit balances just the same. And A is for assets. So those items carry debit balances. Now let's take a look at our credit balances from PERS, RLS. R stands for revenues, L stands for liabilities, while S is sales. So here we are. You're presented with six items, the word pearls divided into two, P is for purchases, E expenses, A assets, R revenues, L liabilities, and S sales. But guess what? We have a few more things that can fall under debit balances and they are return inwards and drawing. So those items also carry debit balances. And for the credit or provisions for bad debts, provisions for depreciation, returns outwards, and capital. So once you have this easy, 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 you're able to generate your trial balance from a list of balances. Let us take a look at that work example now. So you're presented with the question, January 2011, no, number 3B. And the question reads, the following balances were taken from the books of Metal Works Enterprises on April 30th, 2010. An inexperienced bookkeeper placed some items in the wrong column. Now, you're presented with those items based on how the inexperienced individual prepared a child balance. Of course, it is not accurate. So what you're asked to do is to rewrite the child balance from, for metal works enterprises in good style, including an amount for capital. So at this time, I'll be preparing the trial balance for Metal Works Enterprises trial balance as at the 30th of April, 2010. And the items that carry debit balances are listed in the, in the debit column. Items with credit balances are listed in the credit column. And don't forget, we'll be using the principle of pearls that um, was introduced to you earlier. So here we go. Land and buildings, and we're going in order so that we don't forget um, anything, we don't leave out anything. And as in exam, as you use the item, put a line through it or mark it, indicate that you have used it. Okay, so we have land and buildings, and land and buildings that is an asset, so therefore that's a debit balance, and that is $68,000. Next item, bank overdraft and bank overdraft is a liability and that is credited next item cash on and and that is an asset so that's a debit balance we're using up the debit column for that next item is accounts receivable and accounts receivable is an asset so that is a debit balance, 49,000. The other name for accounts receivable is debtors. 
Next, we have carriage inwards and carriage inwards and carriage outwards are usually um, not recorded accurately. Usually persons tend to put next item is uh, carriage inwards. And another term for carriage inwards is transportation in. Usually carriage inwards and carriage outwards are recorded incorrectly. Both of them are expenses, so therefore they should be debited. Next item, carriage outwards. Next term for that is uh, transportation out. It's a cost that the business take on, so it's an expense. Expenses carry debit balances, right? Following that, we have accounts payable. Accounts payable is creditor. And that's a liability, so therefore that's a credit balance, and the value there is thirty eight thousand two hundred and fifty. Now we're on to rent receive. Rent receive is a revenue, so therefore that is a credit balance. Rent received credit of uh, ten thousand two hundred dollars. Moving on, motor vehicles. Motor vehicles is an asset. So therefore we are going to enter that under the debit column and the value for that is 36,000. Next allowance for depreciation of motor vehicles. Same thing as provisions for depreciation. So that is a credit balance depreciation on uh, motor vehicles and the value for that is 12,000 right next item purchases returns what's the alternative for purchases returns that is returns outwards, return outwards carry a credit balance. And uh, return outwards is basically a reduction in the stock. That's a credit balance. Sales returns is our next item. Alternative term for sales returns is uh, returns inwards. That is a debit balance of 1,100. Next item we have commission paid. Commission paid is an expense. So therefore that is uh, a debit balance. Commission paid debit balance of $1,600. Next, loans. Loans are liability. Therefore that is a credit balance and the amount is $25,000. Next, we have sales of 105,400, and that is a credit balance. So that's 105,400. And ensure that you write the correct value to ensure that the, when you're finished, you are accurate. So sales is 105,400. Next item following sales is purchases. Remember, I'm trying to go in order so that we don't miss out anything. And I want you to do the very same when you get into your exam. Purchases, yes, that is a debit balance. So that is 90,000 in the debit column. And we have drawings. Drawings is uh, a reduction in capital. We reduce capital on the debit side. So hence the reason drawings carry a debit balance. And the final item there based on the list is salaries. And the amount for that is 12,500. And this is debited because it is an expense. Now that we are finished entering all the items that we were presented with, if you look at your debit, total your debit, you will get 271,800. And if you total your credit, you would get 197,950. Yes, it is not equal. Your total debit doesn't equal to your total credit. Um, 
what you were asked to do is to show the amount for capital. If you're running your business, of course, there would be capital. So apart from the examiners asking you to find the capital, you need to ensure that you show the capital. What is a business without capital, right? Now, what are we going to use to ascertain the capital? If you use total assets minus total liabilities to generate your capital, you may end up calculating that incorrectly and therefore your total debit would not be equal to your total credit. What we're going to do, an easy way in getting this done is capital is equal to your total, total debit minus your total credit, right? So very easy, very easy, trust me. Total debit minus total credit gives you the value for capital. Now we are going to calculate that. So let's do that. As indicated earlier, the total debit is 271,800 and our total credit is 197,950, right? Now, Plug that in your calculator. What do you get? The value that we get for capital is, so capital is equal to 73,850. So that difference that you have calculated is 73,850 and that is the amount for your capital. We're now going to put this in our trial balance. So remember capital carries a credit balance. And remember, apart from that, your total debit was larger than your total credit. So therefore, to get it balanced, to get it equal, we enter the capital on the credit side. Now, your next step is to ensure that you put in your total. Now, your both column should be equal, and the value is 271,800, 271. 800 for our credit just the same. And don't forget the principle to put your single line above and your double line below. So remember single line above, double line be below. And guess what? We are finished with the trial balance for Metalworks Enterprise. So there we go with the response, right? Remember, don't forget to use pearls where you divide the, the word in two. PEA stands for purchases, expenses, assets. RLS stands for revenues, liabilities, and sales. The line that separated the, the word pearls over on your left, these items are your debit balances. Over on your right, these items carry credit balances. In addition to your debit balances, you have returns inwards, drawings. In addition to your credit balances, you have provisions for bad debts, provision for depreciation, returns outwards, and capital. And remember, to find your capital when you're given a list of balances to work with, total your debit total your credit and find the difference between the two and there you will have your accurate, accurate amount for your capital. So that is it for this quick lesson on preparing a trial balance from a list of balances. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.